Welcome to this session on building Humeo parsers. In this session, we will cover an overview of Humeo parsers and proceed to create some listed here from scratch. To accomplish this, we will be using the built-in parser code editor. We will do our development without having to set up a log shipper or listener. There will also be zero ingest impact to our license while developing. In previous sessions, we've covered the data flow from source to storage in Humeo. Parsers fit right in at the beginning in the ingest phase. You will send data to Humeo for ingestion. It needs to be parsed for field and time stamped extraction. Recall that parsers are associated with the Humeo repository. A parser is a piece of code that transforms incoming data into events. Humeo offers a simple code editor where we will build our parsers and do initial testing. In Humeo, we need the time at which an event occurred, also known as the timestamp. Every event must have a timestamp, and if one is not assigned by the parser, Humeo will assign the current system time as the timestamp. To get the timestamp out of an event, we will use a Humeo parsing function or a regular expression, also known as regex. Once we have the timestamp, we can assign it to a Humeo field with the associated formatting. This code shows a popular example using the parse JSON and parse timestamp functions. We will use the parser code editor to do our development. It is a simple editor and easy to use. There's a section for the parser script where code can be directly entered or cloned from another source. For testing, you can add example events and test them until you get your parser behaving as you desire. We will create five different parsers, representing some of the most common types of data. JSON, comma-separated files or CSVs, XML, KV or key value pairs, and unstructured logs. For this demonstration, I will be using a simple Docker install of Humeo. To save a lot of clicking and typing, I've created a parse test repository with some placeholders as parsers. These are empty. We will start with JSON. I'll go and grab a sample of some JSON data. And pop it in here. Notice it's got a timestamp of October the 12th of 2021, and my, now my current time is, is in 2022. So just for grins, I'll just type in parse. And we'll just run that. Save it. Run our test. Humeo extracts the fields just fine. And you can see at the bottom is our timestamp, but Humeo does not know about the timestamp. So we need to fix that and pass a parse timestamp function. So here we'll tell Humeo to take this field and format it that and use it as the timestamp. If that works, you should see this change to the current timestamp here in the timestamp field. And sure enough, it switched it to October the 12th of 2021. For our next parser, we'll use comma-separated files. I've downloaded some crime data from a munis municipal website, and that will be our sample. Do you have to tell Humeo through the parse CSV function what the column headers are? I'll bring in my sample data now. And these match the column headers here. Notice there's a date field that I'll be using here to parse the timestamp using this format. So save it, run it. This date is, is 9 5 of 2015. 
using the day month there, it's 9-5 of 2015. And we have all this data extracted from the comma separated event. Next, we'll do XML. I'll bring in my XML data. That's a fairly large file. And notice this date is called start. It's the one I'll use. There's not another date in here. And it's under the session tag. So you'll see session and probably some spacing or something with start for the, the processing of the date. Put this in here. Here we're doing a parse XML and we're doing the field of parse session dot under bar start, taking advantage of the, of the space there. Save that, run it. Notice this is a 2012 date and here we have a 2012 timestamp, so that worked. And it extracted all this data here. And that's parse XML. Let's look at parsing key value pairs. Make this a little bigger. So here we have a lot of key value pairs with an equal sign as a delimiter. Notice our timestamp. This file has a little bit of different quirk to it. There's a time and a date up here, but with no year. Yet that same time and date with a year is captured down here in date time. So we'll use that as our date and time as our timestamp. So I'll use the KV parse query function and then using the date time field in this KV part will be our timestamp. Save it. Run it. Notice that changes to 2020. And that matches our date here, date time, as well as up here. And that's it for key value pairs. Last but not least is unstructured data. Now, unstructured data requires regular expressions to make sense of it. So I'll go and get my sample that I downloaded from the web with some unstructured data. And to do that, I will have to write a regular expression, which I've copied, to extract this first timestamp here using this. Now, one of the things about regular expressions and unstructured data is you need to find someone who knows the data to tell you what these different fields are. That looks like some kind of count or code maybe. That's definitely an IP address. You have some hunches of what these things are, but you really need someone who knows the data. What we'll do is we'll just start here and show you extracting the timestamp through a regular expression. Notice it's not going to do that until I move this. So yes, it did work. I'll scroll down here at the bottom. You can see our timestamp field TS was extracted and assigned as a timestamp here. Next, I'll add a few more fields, just calling them something that I choose to call them. I'll add this code and this IP address. What these S's are is just I'm alternating white space characters and non-white space characters. So it's saying search for a white space character grab the, the value using a regex capture group, then go for another non-white space character and just alternating that way. I'm not a regex expert, so please do not write comments about how horrible my regex is, because I agree with you. Okay, we'll do this, we'll run the test, and all we should see if we run the test is at the bottom here, two different fields of code and IP address. Test passed, timestamp stays the same, there's our code, there's our IP address. And that is it for building parsers. We thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you at the next video.